and um, and then you know get into banning and get in unlimited uh, accounts. Um, this is something that kind of you know a lot of people get they, they ask us about and you know they, they, they have all these different theories and things, but you know we pretty much got this got this unlocked as far as what exactly works and what doesn't. Um, it's pretty easy, pretty simple, um, and. You know, the accounts you know get locked out. Don't worry about that. We, we we got the system set up perfectly. So, so we're gonna get into that. All right. So, so with that said, let's get into it. Um, first I'm gonna go over the cloaker. Does, does anybody? Um, how many of you guys on here know about the cloaker? Know about Greg's cloaker? Um, gotta shoot some questions out. Well, yeah, I know, I know you, Dave. I know you. <laughs> um. Okay, so we got a few guys on here that, that 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 have the cloaker. Okay, so I know a few guys have it, a few guys don't. So I'm gonna go over this uh, for the guys who don't 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 have it. Okay, so all right, so we got some people who know about it, but uh, but uh, haven't used it. All right, so Greg Greg's cloaker is pretty is pretty cool. You get a lot of um, you get a lot of other resources that come with the cloaker. It's not like you just buying the cloaker. It, it, it comes with training and um, all sorts of cool stuff. So. Um, I definitely highly recommend it, um, not just for the cloaker, but for the training as well. All right, so and I guess I can find you guys a link. Um, I'm pretty sure Greg can get you guys a link, no problem. But um, but uh, once you log into the uh, Super Affiliate Rockstar Inner Circle training, um, you're going to see a lot of different uh, training videos here, training links. So like I said, lots of different resources, all right? But the cloak in, 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 in it of, the, of itself is in the software, under, underneath the software tab, um, under the cloaker um, tab, all right? So you're going to go there, and once you, let me make sure you guys see what I see, yeah. So once you go there, um, creating a new campaign is just as simple as clicking on Add Campaign, all right? And, of course, you want to have your campaign uh, status active, and you want to just go ahead and give your campaign a name. Now, as you can see with us, we got a lot of different cool campaigns, so it's, it's, it's a really good idea to make sure you name your campaigns, um, something familiar, something you can find, because it starts to get kind of crazy if you don't, don't name things correctly. So, um, so yeah, so let's, let's, let's go ahead and just give it a name. Let's go ahead and give it a test campaign. All right, and in the cloaker, you're going to have two links. You're going to have the fake URL and the real URL. All right, uh, a lot of people get confused by this, but you know, just want to make things keep it simple. All right, the fake URL is fake, meaning that it's not real. <laughs> All right, meaning that this, the, the, that that that's the URL that you want Bing to see. All right, so you have Bing. All right, you have Bing's reviewers. They're sitting at a desk. All right, you're doing some black hat shit. You're running some traffic to porn sites or whatever you're doing. You don't want them to see what you're doing, so you have your fake site that you create that we're going to go over uh, next, and you're going to put that here. All right. So, as a matter of fact, let me just show you guys a fake site example. This is a fake site. This is a Garcinia Cambogia fake site. All right, and it is disguised as a real site, but it's a fake site, it's not a real site, all right? You're going to put that here, all right? And then your real site, you're going to put here. This is your real URL, all right? And you're going to put your real URL there. And in this case, our real URL is where we want our visitors to go, all right? Not the bank people. Actually, God, I hate this thing. All right, so this is the real URL. This is your money page. This is where you want um, your visitors to go. Um, this is where you want to send uh, everyone who is not a bank reviewer. <coughs> Excuse me. Man. All right, so very simple, very straightforward. You got your fake URL, you got your real URL. Put your fake URL here, put your real URL here, and um, Make sure that, excuse me, <coughs> you put your, um, you put the HTTP colon backslash backslash um, first. Otherwise, it won't work, all right? And then once you have that, once you do that, you just click Add Campaign, all right? And that's it, all right? That's all you do. 
and that's just step one though. So let me actually go back and then discuss a couple of these um, different options that, that, that occurred or that was shown here. All right, so you have the optional rules underneath the real URL, right? So you have only allow unique IPs, which is, you know, makes sense, very, very intuitive, very easy to understand. It, it says that only unique IPs are allowed to view the real page, all right? So if somebody, let's say, in uh, Georgia visits your site, all right, and they get to your real site, so they get here, and they see your site, they see what you offer, and they leave. They don't buy anything. If they try to come back tomorrow and visit uh, your cloaked your cloak link, they won't go to the real page. They'll go to the fake page. All right? And that is a security function that uh, the creator of this cloaker put in place to prevent multiple people, well, put, for preventing the same person visiting your site multiple times. Because more often than not, if someone's visiting your site multiple times, that could be an indication that they're snooping around. All right? They're trying to figure out. There could be some bang person trying to snoop around, figure out what's going on with your site. And so it's a security measure put in place to say, hey, if this person comes back twice, I mean, only unique people can come to this site. If they come back, if they come once and they come to our site, they can never come back again. All right? That's basically what it says. So you can check that, but put that extra security measure in place. Now, the next thing you can do is check the ignore the no referral rule. Now, Personally, I will never check this box. Never check this box. Um, what this box says is that um, it can be with the ignore. Um, yeah, I'll get to that in a second. All right, so what this box says is that, you know, you want to ignore the no referral rule. Now, the no referral rule is the basic rule that is built into the cloaker. And the rule says if that if there is no referrer coming in, from that visitor. So when a visitor comes to your site, if he doesn't have a referrer, then he will always go to the fake page. All right, and a referrer is just a referrer. What I mean by referrer is it's like a tag saying that this person came from this site. All right, so if I'm in Facebook and I click your link, the referrer is Facebook. If I'm on Google.com and I click on your link, the referrer is Google. If I'm on Huffington Post and I click your link, then the referrer is Huffington Post. That's what we, what we mean by refer. refer. There's a referrer that um, indicates where that person is coming from. There's some site that that person is coming from. Now, what usually happens is, is that when Bing uh, reviews your, your campaigns, they're not coming from any particular site. They're not coming from Facebook. They're not coming from Huffington Post. They're not coming from... Um, you know, MSNBC.com, they're just simply grabbing your link and pasting it into the page here. And when you do that, there's no referrer, and so it always goes to the fake page. All right? And that's a good uh, security measure to have in place when you put your campaigns up in Bang to tell Bang, say, hey, you know what? If that person does not come from an actual real site, then we always want to send them to the fake page. Because nine times out of ten, Someone who's not coming from a, a real site that does not have a referrer is probably pasting your link into the browser, or they're coming from email. Because you know you come from email, there's no referrer. So I always try to leave that unchecked. Um, and it, the only way for you to test out your your uh, affiliate link, I mean your cloak link, is to actually uh, click on your link from a referrer, like. It's like a Facebook or something like that. So I actually show you guys right now exactly what to do. So we're going to save this campaign, and we're going to go into a test campaign. Now you're going to download the cloaked script. Now this is a, this is the confusing thing when I first started trying to um, understand this. You have the fake URL and you have the real URL, but you also have another URL, and that URL that that the the other URL is the URL or the location of the cloak file. This file that we're downloading is the cloak file. So we're going to call it cloaked file.php. You have to name it PHP. All right. And we're going to put it in. And, and, hey, hold, hold on one section, Creed. Um, let me just give a give a note to you guys. Um, like, Shakri's doing this for 
example. Um, but like normally, you wouldn't name it that necessarily because um, it's going to be inside of your URL. So you, you he just naming it something so it's easy to kind of keep up with so you guys kind of see what's going on. But I'm going to recommend you know that you guys don't actually name it cloak file. Um, this is just for example sake because you don't want anything in there that bang or anybody will see to lead them to believe that you're actually cloaking. So, um, you know, you, you name it something else, but whatever you name it, just make sure you remember it and download it to your desktop, like Shakree says, because you're going to have to actually upload this file, which Shakree's about to go into. But I just didn't want everybody naming their stuff like cloakfile.php <laughs> and, um, you know, or whatnot. So anyway, so 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 go ahead, Shakree. Yeah, that's actually a very good point. Do not name your cloak file cloak file. <laughs> That's <laughs> not gonna be a good idea to do. All right, so, so, so yeah, so, so back to my point here. You're gonna have a real URL, a fake URL, and you're gonna have the URL pointing to your cloaked file. So people get that kind of uh, confused. But what I just did is I downloaded the cloaked file and I put it in um, my site here. So I'm gonna actually connect to my hosting account. If I can find, oh yeah, gotta scroll up. Duh. All right. Okay, so we're gonna connect to that, and I save the file as cloaked file example, as you can see here. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this file and I'm gonna put it in the main directory of my site. The name, the name of my site is 3M Sales. I'm sorry, I know it's us. MomTipsForYou.com, and we're gonna type in cloaked file example.php. All right, hit enter, and nothing happens because I did something wrong. All right, so and this happens a lot. Um, I spelled cloak wrong. Yeah, I have to spell cloak wrong. It's L C C O. Okay. All right. So copy that. Hit enter. And as you can see, it goes to the fake page. Now this is this is what I was meaning by uh, the third URL. All right. This is the URL to the cloak file. All right. And the cloak file. This cloak file. Is, this is this URL is pointing to. Is going to determine the person that's that that visit this particular. Uh, Link. They're going to determine whether that person should get to the new. I mean, should get to the real page or get to the fake page. So what I did was just paste the URL into the browser, and so I don't have a. I don't have a refer. I'm not coming from anywhere. I'm coming from out of space, pretty much. So I hit enter. It's going to go straight to the fake page. All right. That's using the no refer rule. It's built in. No refer rule says if it doesn't have a refer, then it will always go to the fake page. All right. But if I go to Facebook. And I log in to Facebook. And this is what I do to test out and make sure my cloaker is working. Uh, I'm going to edit profile, update info. And if I click edit and place this URL as my URL for my website and click save. If I click this link from Facebook, it has refer. The refer is Facebook and I click it, it should go to the real page as you can see here. Alright, just like magic, okay? So when you have a real when you have a, a refer when someone the when the visitor is coming from a site, it can it will go to the fake page. Like uh the volume, I can't hear you. Are you muted? Yeah, I'm muted. Yeah, um, I, I was just letting you know um, your, your stuff is, was getting choppy for some reason. I'm not sure why, but but you're good now though. But it was kind of going in and out a little bit. Um, I'm not exactly sure why, but um, let's see. Do, uh, close any unused applications. So yeah, I mean you should you should be good to go. You, okay. you sound fine now. All right. So let me ask, answer uh, Ross's question. Um, what's the issue with the real page that you don't want the reviewer to see? It looks okay. Um, no, it's not okay. Looks, <laughs> it's not okay. Um, okay, cool, 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 cool. Well, I want to answer for everyone. If you don't know, this is an advertorial, and um, Bing and Google they don't like advertorials. 
um, because they're, you know, they're editor, they're fake editorials. So they're, they're advertising. It's it's a it's a mixture between advertising and editorial, and they don't like them. Um, and you know, we not we're not women's health, as you can see, we're using the women's health logo. Um, this is actually Oprah's Facebook page. Um, the number of likes. <laughs> so, um, you know, Helen has been, you know, as you, as you look at her name, has man, you know, it's a play on like, um, it's an unconscious play I think they're doing on, you know, she uses this, if she uses this product, she has a man, like she has a man, so use this product. So, um, but that's not a real reporter. Um, you know, Dr. Oz probably are not, does not agree with us using this, this video. Um, so yeah, you know, if this page is, it's, uh, you know, these actually comments are actually real. They're actually taken from a uh, real Garcinia product uh, page. But for the most part, it's an advertorial. It's advertising. And it says it at the top that this is, this is advertorial. It's advertising. So, um, so yeah, so, you know, if, if you, if you need to know where to find examples of them, we went over this in the first webinar, where to find them. But um, this is this is uh, this is definitely not something that Bing um, will like. All right, it's not illegal. It's just they don't. You know, it's they own Bing. They own what they want to show and what they don't want to show. Okay, so so that's that. All right, so that's how the cloaker works. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, just make sure you don't name your file cloak file. Disguise it somehow. Um, and. Um, We'll 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 uh, send out a link or something to the cloaker. If you guys um, need a link or something, we'll we'll figure it out. We'll we'll send you a link. <clears throat> okay, yeah, uh, okay, yeah. Uh, John's getting it for you for you guys if you want to get access to it. I highly recommend it. Um, it's the cheapest cloaker we've ever we found um, out there. Everything else is highly expensive, like crazy, stupid expensive. Um, <clears throat> so um, it's, it's the best one out there. We know the guy who created it. He's a real smart guy. And you get a lot of training with with the cloak, a lot of a lot of invaluable training, the same training we use um, to really take our business to the next level. So, so definitely, um, definitely, definitely highly recommend it. Um, all right, you can use it for everything. You can use it for Facebook. You can use it for mobile. Everything. All right. So with that said, let's go ahead and uh, move on to the next part of this thing. And I want to talk about the fake page. And this is probably one of the most important parts of um, of you know, banking on 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 Bing, oh, Google, you know, um, too. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I gotta do that. Um, but uh, but yeah, so the the fake page is the most important thing. Hello. No, oh, I thought you were saying something. I heard an echo. All right, so um, so the fake page is the is probably the most important thing to 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 uh, take care of first because if you don't have your fake page done correctly, um, you're gonna get banned immediately. Um, but if you don't get banned, you have a low quality score, and you won't last that long. So, um, the, what I rec highly recommend is um, outsourcing this to Odesk. That's one way to do it. Or what you guys can do is go out and you know swipe somebody else's page. Um, you can you can swipe another fake page for someone else. But like I said, I don't I don't really recommend that because um, people have a way of determining if you've taken their site. Um, we've gotten several letters from people and several phone calls from from sites we've swiped, and and not even use it for anything, just swipe it, and then somehow they know. I don't know what I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's some type of secret code or something. But um, I, I highly recommend just get this outsourced to Odesk. Um, and it, it's not that hard. It's not that that um, difficult to do. Um, it's pretty cheap. You know, we get our sites done for about forty, fifty bucks. Um, the best place to go to start out is. Um, <clears throat> generating unique content. Uh, that's the biggest thing. You want to have content that's unique, that's um, unique to your site. Because what Bing does and what Google does is they scan your site to see if your content is duplicate content, see if it's already out there, if it's repurposed or not. So um, you can get these um, con you can get this content done by Everbright, but I I'll, I'll, I'll recommend it um, Spin Distribute. That's a link here. You can go there and um, you can get articles done for like a dollar, you know, Two dollars, and you know I recommend getting like ten of them done. So you know, spend ten bucks, twenty bucks on content, get the content down, and then um, you just set up. Uh, you hand that up to your outsourcer, and you set up. You just let them know you want to contact us page with your email, with your phone number, 
on your 800 number, um, and you want to terms and conditions, you can kind of copy that for somebody else's site, you know, because it's, it's a fake page, you know, you're not going to be really selling anything real. Um, so you want to get like, a terms and conditions um, unique to your particular niche. So if you're in diet, you want to try to swipe something, um, terms and conditions in a diet type of niche. Um, privacy policy, same thing. Um, I actually use generate privacypolicy.com and it will actually generate a privacy policy for you. Um, so if you guys are trying to figure out how, you know, how to do that, they, they have definitely have different services and free sites out there that, that'll do it for you. Um, you want to have your health, you want to have your health uh, disclaimers um, uh, on, on, on your site definitely uh, displayed prominently. And what we do is, if, as you can see here, um, as you can see here at the bottom, um, let me make sure you guys can see what I see. Uh, okay, yeah, so all this, we, we basically put all the disclaimers we can out on the page. And we just want to basically show Bing that we're 100%, you know, compliant, 100%, you know, open with our business. Um, that we're not trying to do anything funny and a scam. And, uh, you know, you always want to use a real email. Don't use any gmail.coms or nothing like that. You know, buy a domain name. Like you know, mydomainname.com. You know, you know, you want to like support at mydomainname.com. You know, get a real email. Um, I think a lot of a lot of a lot of hosting accounts actually offer them free uh, with a domain name. Um, use a real address. Um, what we do is we you usually use UPS addresses. Like you can actually go in and type in UPS um, and just find an address. I mean, you don't you don't need to. You don't need to use a real address. I mean, like you don't need to have access to that address as far as it be your address. But you need to have you need to go out and find an address that you can use for your business. Um, that somebody else's address, pretty much. You, you just want to have a real address, and uh, we like to use, we like to use UPS stores because um, you know it's just it's just uh, it's just perfect for for um, for what we're doing here. Um, so. <clears throat> So that you definitely want to have that and an 800 number. And the real address and 800 number you want to display prominently on your page. So if you go back here, as you see, I got it to the top right. Like the address and the email. You know, um, I think I had the 800 number up there at one point. Yeah, and the 800 number. So, you know, we want to be 100% compliant and transparent with Bing and our customers and have our contact earth in terms of privacy. And we want to have everything out in the open and say, hey, look at us. We're 100% legit. We're not trying to scam you. We're 100% open and transparent. Um, we have good content. You know, when, when people come to our site, they have content to read and to learn about and to stay a while and enjoy. I mean, that's what Bing and Google wants. You know, they want. Um, people who to come to your site and to spend time on it all right and you want your site done well enough so that um, people will stay on your site at least for longer than a second um, actually the actually the bounce rate on your page actually um, go factors in into your um, quality score as well um, so you want to have a page that at least looks decent and um, allows people to kind of kind of um, you know click around and and uh, at least you know make it make it look legit all right um, we do tr we do try to sell some off the fake site, um, as you can see here. And this is something you don't want to do with um, with Google. We learned, so you want to click order. We have it go into um, the actual page. All right, but as you can see here, it goes from newgarciniacambogia.com and it goes to a different site. It goes to Miracle Garcinia Cambogia. So you can't do that with Google. It's a it's an off site domain. They don't like that, but with Bing, they don't care. All right, so we do try to monetize this site as much as possible, and that's why we make it somewhat pretty and try to add some decent content to it. Um, we do have our links there because the cloaker is going to have a certain bleed rate, you know, depending upon the traffic. It may be as high as 20% or low as 5%. And so, you know, if you're driving a lot of traffic, that tends to be a good a good bit of traffic. You know, a thousand visitors, you may have two hundred visitors, you know, one hundred, two hundred, you know, fifty visitors that that actually don't get to the actual real page. Uh, they get to the fake page. So, so you want to have this stuff set up too. Um, um, okay, want to have this stuff set up too to um, 
<clears throat> to allow yourself to make some money from the fake, fake page. Um, so yeah, and that, that's about it. I mean, it's not that complicated. I won't overcomplicate this. You know, um, you just want to be transparent. And if you want to know more information, you can definitely go to Bing, and um, they have their site policies. So you know, they they they'll have it like displayed exactly what they want, what they don't want. You know, what 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 they recommend. Um, so definitely read over that if you have any more questions. Um, but just just to try to make sure you have good content on your site. Um, um, and you know, with with us, you know, you have to realize that none of this stuff is real. You know, for for bank anyway, you know, our eight hundred numbers aren't real. You know. Yeah, let me let me chime in there. Um, so normally, like, what I do, guys, is um, well, which I should, I don't know about this particular site, but normally, um, I'll get the eight hundred numbers. Um, because we got other stuff besides Bing that I won't even go into on here, but so. I'll get like these 800 numbers and then I'll record a voicemail um, and basically just saying like, you know, um, if you reach this voicemail, it means all our associates are busy, um, you know, at this time, uh, you know, so please leave a message and, you know, have one of our um, representatives get back with you as soon as possible. Duh, duh, duh. So, you know, um, because with, with Bing, not so much, Google will call them, like Google will call those numbers, um, Bing. You know, not so much. Google definitely will call them. Um, and there's real cheap services out there that you can get these 800 numbers. Just put a recording up and boom, bam, that's that. Um, and then I think somebody was asking. I, I just wanted to stop for a minute and answer it because I saw a lot of the, kind of the same questions coming in. And then, um, <clears throat> let's see, what was the other ones? Um, oh, yeah, and then as far as the account stuff, like you can get a P.O. box. Like I use a lot of... Um, I usually do a lot of P.O. box type stuff. Um, you know, I know in different countries, I don't know, like I was talking to some guys, they were in Estonia or something like that, and they didn't have that option or something like that. But I know in like America and in most places, you can get some sort of a P.O. box, um, you know, to, to have an address. Uh, you know, if you, if you want to go like and be very much compliant, then you can go and actually get like a, you know, an address from, from the, uh, uh, from the post office, UPS store, you know, anything like that. And then, uh, like I said, 800 number, just Google, um, you know, buy 800 numbers, um, buy 800 hotline. And they're cheap. I think ours was like 7 bucks a month, <laughs> 7 $8 a month, so it's not that expensive. And then it just gives you the option to uh, actually do a recording. And you can set the recording to come on at any time you want. And obviously, you just want to leave it to be a voicemail that comes on all the time, you know, basically. So, so um, I think that was pretty much. Let's see, Google, you don't want to have put an order button on the fake site, um, or to have the button go to another site. Um, oh, okay, Brian. Basically, what you don't want to do when when Shakri showed when he clicked the order button and then it went to an actual another domain. It was uh, you know, our domain, whatever it was, New Garcinia. Then it went to uh, MiracleGarciniaCambogia.com. So it went to another order form that we're actually affiliates for. So with Google, whatever it wants it to stay on that same domain. So. Um, if they're clicking on New Garcinia, exactly, yeah, keep keep the domain, keep it on the same domain, exactly, there you go. All right, cool, you can go ahead, Shakri. All right, cool, perfect, all right, um, so that's that, with about, about, about the fake site, you know, like I said, don't, don't, don't overcomplicate it. Um, the thing, you don't have to go all out like that, you know, with having real addresses and real numbers, but like I said, it's always good to kind of cover your track, so. Um, if you if you if you um if you can afford it and you are the type of paranoid person like me, I would definitely go for the route of having a real address and a real phone number. <laughs> so so uh so yeah, so with that said, uh, we can move on here to uh massive testing. This is the uh, next to you know, having your fake page up and having um your site not being banned and having a good uh you know, compliant account. The next thing is to use uh um uh, landing page genius and use the tools for massive testing. Um, and this is, this is a lot. I, I, I train a lot of guys. Uh, you know, we we got some clients that, that want some extra help. And what I notice a lot about them is that they, even when I tell them to do this, they still don't do it. Um, I, I don't know why. They just 
final reason not to do this, and this is the most important. Um, <laughs> this is the most important to the whole system, um, <clears throat> and they still don't do it. So I want to stress this: um, if you're going to do this, do this. If, do, if you're going to do anything, do this. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to have a fake address, you're going to have this and that. You're going to have your coke said sick coke file dot php. You know. It, you can have all that stuff fucked up, but if you don't do this, then just quit. All right. This is the most important part of the whole system. All right. So what I mean by massive testing is that you want to test um, different elements of your page, and I'm actually bring this up. And so let's go here. So you want to have at least 20 headlines. You want to start with the headlines first. You want to sit down and have write 20 different headlines. Now you don't have to write. Come up with your own with your own um, headlines. Um, I think that's what a lot of guys think. It's like, oh man, I gotta sit down and write a headline. I, you know, I don't know how to write. You, know, you don't have to do that. You can go and swipe. So you can go and and uh, you know type in like 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 you learned on the first webinar. You know, go around and look at different diet advertorials. Um, you know, go to Google and type in diet advertorial. Type in advertorial and type another keyword um, like Helen Hasman. You know, you can actually go in and type Helen Hasman into Google and which is the name of the reporter that everyone everyone uses and type, you know, advertorial. And then you can visit different different sites. See this is a different uh this is a different headline. Today's diet tip, you know. So you can actually look at different headlines, different different uh, advertorials and take their headlines and start there. So you don't you don't you don't have to make up your own stuff. All right, so that's a, that's the first thing you want to do. You want to go in and you want to um, you know, come up with a, with a list of different, like you know, twenty different headlines, and then you want to simply use landing page genius to set up um, to set up the uh, the the the, uh, the, the, uh, the rotation. And you do that um, if you read over your landing page genius guide, um, and you, you took about you know fifteen minutes out of your day to, to learn it and figure it out. Um, you would know that you know you just go here into your HTML editor, you open up your file with Dream, with Dreamweaver, and you just paste. Um, you know, you just copy over your first headline here, and you paste it here. You change the number to, to three or four, whatever number you're using. Just make sure the numbers are different, and you just have a different headline here. All right, and that's it. You know, you do that 20 times. Um, you set it up once, and um, you know, you, you should be good to go. So I want to get too bogged down with technical aspects of landing page genes because, at the end of the day, it's nothing more than you know, one word you need to memorize. You, know, you, you need to know that you need to have the word skip it, underscore it, a letter, um, and a number in brackets, and an equal sign, and your headline in between apostrophes and close with a uh, close with a bracket, um, with the, with the um, semicolon. All right, but that's all you need to know as far as testing headlines, and just test 20 of them. So this is the most important thing you need to focus on is finding 20 headlines. You, you need to do this before you even put your campaign up. You need to have all this stuff set up. You know, I know you get that little antsy feeling when you have everything set up, ready to go. You only have one headline. You're like, oh, you know what? Fuck it. You know, we just run it and see what happens. Um, don't do that. You know, don't start bad habits. Um, not, you know, testing things um, the, the right way. All right, it's the first and most important thing in the world. All right, and this is what this is what took us to the next level. This is another thing that we learned from Greg. Um, this is another thing that really uh, helped us out is is the the massive testing that he was doing and that we weren't doing and nobody else is doing because it's the words that make the money. It's not anything else. It's the words. You know, the words are powerful. You know, I mean that's that's something that. Um, a lot, a lot, a lot, like a lot of people, don't, they miss because a lot of guys come in here not from a marketing background. They're just like, oh, I want to make some money online, you know. But at the end of the day, marketing runs the whole world. I mean, if you have a product to sell, you got to be able to sell it. How you sell it? You sell it through influence. You sell it, sell it through words, through images, and that's what we're doing here. We're marketers, so it's the words that's going to sell. And so that's the most, the most important thing. It's not your damn hosting. It's not your goddamn fucking tool that you want to buy. It's not the cloaker. It's not all this other shit. It, it's your words. It's the most important thing. That's, you know, I, I know you can get confused and get kind of lost in all this stuff, setting all this stuff up. I don't know how to do this. Or what's the server? Or how to connect here? Or I don't know how to do HTML. All that stuff is okay, but it's just a means to an end. Once you get all that stuff set up, 
that's just the beginning. The next part of the whole process is turning words into money. You know, turning words into money. I know, I know all you guys know a, a guy who always puts his foot in his mouth when he's around a girl and never closes the deal. You know, I know all you guys know somebody like that. And I know somebody like that. You know what I mean? So, um, and you know, you've got some guys that just always say the right thing. You know, they always say the right thing when they go out. And, and um, and it's just it's, it's it's like that, and it's the words that that um that are definitely um that are definitely causing that to happen. All right, so so uh, take that to the bank. I want to kind of spend some time on that. Um, don't overlook this part of it. All right. Uh, the next the, the next element you want to start out testing is um your your subheadline, and this here is the subheadline. So. As you guys can see that this shocking report was created by Women's Health to expose the truth behind a very weird diet. All right. Now, just to give you guys an example, um, um, I changed, I added the number one to this, to this, to this subheadline. I said, I think I put this shocking report which was created by Women's Health to expose the truth behind one very weird diet, and it bombed. I mean, it shit bomb. Not one conversion, and I'm not talking like you know, um, you, the other headline had one conversion. This one had zero. I'm talking like the other headline sub headline had like seven conversions, and this one had zero after thousands of clicks. So, so that's how important this stuff is. Like, you change a fucking one character, and it, and it bombs. It turns the whole page. It turns to shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, um. That's the that's the excitement. That's the thing I love about this is that you can be um, you're, you're in competition with all these other guys who promote the same page, and everybody has you know the same page, and, and you know everybody's ripping, ripping down everybody else's stuff. So the question is like, how do you make any money if everybody's stealing everybody else's shit? Well, number one, you you improve upon the page, and that's the that's the I S D I swipe the point improve improve you. You improve it, and once you find out, once you start testing, you'll hit something that just works so well, and it will blow everybody out of the everybody out of the water. You know, you have something; it'll it, it turn your money into like it'll double, triple, quadruple your money, and it, it's the most amazing feeling in the world when you find something that works um, so well. You're like, holy shit! A lot of times it's by accident. You know, you accidentally put the wrong number in or did something like that. But you guys will realize that. Um, just you need to realize that making a small change and making these different changes is where the big money is. All right, you want to see, you, you've gotten something, you gotten somewhere to start. You got you got you got a advertorial, you got a headline, you, you've got, you know, product, you got all the stuff set up, you've got something initially to, to go off of, but it's the actual, um, the testing and, and, and the um, different variation that you come up with and then finding that particular thing that works well that's going to make you a shit ton of money. All right. So, so you want to first start with your headlines and then start with your subheadlines. All right, and I suggest 20, 20 each. So, um, I think 20 times 20 is 400. So that's when you need 400. Right? And, and let me, um, let me, let me point out a couple things real quick to Shakri while you're doing that. Um, excuse me, is uh, some of the things I focus on, which you guys will find. Like I'm, trust me, I'm not like some pro copywriter. Um, you know, half ass at best, but still good enough to make a lot of money doing this. So so what I normally do is uh what I find can make a lot of difference. Um like I like to change the numbers and the amount of pounds lost, but make sure that you stay congruent. So you want to make sure you stay congruent with that with on the page because on the page uh throughout the copy on this page it's going to be talking about how much weight some of these chicks have lost and all that kind of stuff so you want to play around with different numbers for some reason different numbers will resonate resonate more with um with, with more people so you know you can play around with them joints um and then another thing that we try that can make a big difference sometimes is um we'll use celebrity names um, you know, versus just the word celebrity. But I think celebrity wound up outperforming, but we had did like Rachel Ray and a couple of others that were doing pretty good. And then we just put celebrities in there itself and then it, it started, it, you know, wound up um, outperforming, outperforming the rest of them. So, you know, just a little subtle things like that that you can try in there. And then if you're running like a trial diet, diet offer, um, you can put like get your, um, you know, get your free bottle today or, you know, try a bottle today, you know, that kind of stuff um, and creating scarcity which is, you know, throughout the page, you know, like, 
you know, only 17 bottles left. You can try to add the end of it, you know, um, whatever the case may be. And there's a geo, there's a script that you can get that's more advanced. I don't want to get too far ahead, but there's a script you can get that can change the number of bottles as people click on it. It'll like change the number of bottles that's left, stuff like that. But anyway, that's that's more advanced. But um, but anyway, I just want to give you guys some tips on um, like different things to test out within the headline. So names, different numbers of pounds lost. Um, you know, uh, try free bottle. That's only if it's a trial diet offer you're running. You know, tr try a free bottle today, get a free bottle today. That kind of stuff can can help as well. So, um, anyway, so go ahead, Shakri. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, that's another thing. You know, I, I would um, if you if you're doing if you're writing these head these headlines yourself, if you're um, you know, not swiping things, I wouldn't try to you know go too far away from the control. <laughs> I wouldn't try to just make up something out of the out of the blue. What I would try to do is change something small, like change, like John said, change 23 pounds to 27 pounds, um, change belly fat to stomach fat, you know, change one month to 30 days. You know, keep it the same, but try to change a few words here and there, um, because, you know, what I found is that if you if you have something that, that everybody is using, it's a, there's a reason for it. So it's going to be kind of difficult to kind of beat this headline. Um, because you know it's, it's everybody's using, using it for a reason, and, and it's because it works. So um, if you are gonna if you are gonna change if you are gonna change it, I would I would start small first. Um, so so um, so good point. Um, and the next thing you want to do is after you um, have you know tested your you know, you have your twenty headlines, your twenty sub headlines. Um, actually, open this up. You want to uh, then test images. All right. Um, and the images are really important. Um, again, like the images themselves can make or break a, a landing page. And what, what we do is we test this image uh, right here, this woman's health image. And there's tons of different images you can test. And I think this actually rotates. Yeah, it does. So, um, so we so we're using landing page genius, and as you can see here. Um, we were testing two different images. Images we're testing Dr. Oz and uh, the, the woman's health. But um, but uh, it, it, getting images is pretty easy. I mean, you can just go to Google Images um, and actually actually show you um, show you guys. You type in you know woman's health uh, magazine and look how many magazine covers you can test. You know, a lot. It's a lot of different things to test, and there's no reason why you, you know. You, there's no reason for like, oh, well, I don't know what to test, or I mean, all this stuff. And actually, you know, at first the, the image we're testing now wasn't the image um, that was everywhere. It was actually this image here, and I found out through testing that 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 I actually beat that that image with a different um, different image. So. Always test. So that's a, that's the three things I would focus on initially. Have 20 uh, headlines, have 20 sub headlines, and have uh, 20 images. Uh, that's a lot of variations, but um, I, you know, you know, you, you, what else are you gonna do? You know what I mean? Um, if you if you're on a tight budget, um, I would maybe take that down a little bit. You know, if you're extremely strapped for cash, you know, I would take that down to, you know. You know, maybe five headlines, five sub headlines, and five images. Because what you're going to need to do is test enough of each variation to for it to be statistically significant. All right. So, if you're getting paid sixty-five dollars on a payout, you want to have each variation at least run up to sixty-five dollars. So, if you have twenty times twenty times twenty, um, which I think is like eight thousand variations, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. Um, that's eight thousand times sixty-five. You know, with, you know, which is a lot of money. Um, but you you be able to you know you be able to figure out which ones are, are losers, which ones are winners pretty quickly uh, as conversions come in, especially when you start getting more than one conversion. Um, <clears throat> but I always like to go with more more data, more um, more different variations than than less. Uh, so, but a good a good rule of thumb is um, to like if you're going to spend let's say a thousand bucks for testing, a good a good rule of thumb is to have um, take the take take the amount of money you're investing and divide 
um, the payout by it, and that's how many variations you should have. So the payout is 50, you got 1,000 bucks, you should have about 20 different variations. Um, and that should give you enough data per variation to figure out if, if something is profitable or something is not. And if it's not, you should just cut it off. All right, so, and then also the call to action. I'm gonna, let me actually show you guys something uh, that we've tested that actually helped out our page here. I put this order now button here underneath the video. Um, and it actually helped out conversions a lot. Um, I actually tested this. I actually need to test it more because the things always change. But um, what I, my initial thought was that people come to this page and the video starts playing and it gets annoying and, and um, either either going to close the video out, I mean close the page out or go down to the video and pause it. So I figured that people were coming out to the page and watching the video because it was auto playing and then that if they wanted to order it, they would click, they would need a button to click. But I didn't see any type of prominent button for people to click. And um, people are so busy with their lives and doing what they're doing. You want to treat people like they're treat people like they're dumb. I won't say people are dumb, but you want to treat them like they're a child, kind of, um, because they got so many other stuff going on in their mind, and and they're busy. And you know, internet is is a really you know place where you know you can constantly you know, I mean you know, just porn alone will just get you, you get your mind kind of distracted. So there's so much porn, free porn out there. You know, I, I I always think about I always think that people are always looking for porn. So I want to hurt and get their <laughs> get their mind, uh, get get them, uh, get them hooked in before they go back to X videos or something. Um, that's just how I, how I think. You know. Not to say I, I'm almost, I'm always on the sites. I'm just saying, you know, you, you always there's always something else out there that can get people's attention. You know, politics, you know, entertainment sites. So you want to make sure you you really um you really have something um, that really grabs their attention um, before they you know go somewhere else. So um, that actually helped out our conversion rates. So and uh, added these um little just these little arrow just here. Um, I don't know if you guys can see, but it kind of like moving, pointing to step one and step two. Um, so yeah, so and then you, you get more advanced with it, you know, like we tested out, you know, um, uh, Rachel Ray here, image here, you know, I tested out this girl's image, this, uh, this, this, this image here actually did better than the other image. Um, actually added this image here with the before and after. This wasn't in the page. So we did a lot of testing in this page. And once you get more advanced, once you've once you, once you, uh, got a good headline, sub-headline, and, and image, um, you want to test out different ele elements of the page. And we never stop testing. I mean, we always split test. Because um, if you wake up one day, and let's say you spend five, six grand, and let's say you spend five, six grand, you make five, six grand, you realize that if you could have just changed one element on the page, let's say an image, um, and you think it you think it won't matter much, but once you look at your data, you're like, holy shit, you know, this one image, you know, boosted my ROI by, you know, kill fifty percent. You know. So, you know, you know, you take fifty percent of your, you know, five and that's that's twenty five hundred bucks. So you're making an extra twenty five hundred bucks, um, you know, just from testing a different image. You know, um, and that's an extra twenty five twenty five hundred bucks you wouldn't have made. So um, that's how we start really thinking, like, wow, you know, this little stuff that we're not doing, we're, we're putting money on the table. And it's not always, and we're, we're going to talk about this next, but um, it's not always on optimization, optimization and scaling. It's not always getting more keywords or adding more accounts. or It's not always about that. A lot of times it's always it's, it's about taking what you have and just kind of treating them better, you know. You know, it's kind of like, you know, you got a wife, you got a girl. A lot of times you don't, you know, you have bad relationships or whatever. It's not about you going out and find somebody else better. It's just you got to treat it better. You, know? you got to, you know, spend more time with it. Um, you you got to mind what you already have. You know what I'm saying? So uh, so what we do is, you know, if, if, if we um, want to scale our campaigns, um, there's a couple of things you can do. Um, number one, you can focus on the ad CTR. All right. So um, in one of our campaigns um, I'm actually let me actually show you some data here so we can actually talk about some real real shit I know theoretical theoretical shit here so, so let me actually go down this is actually a test campaign um, let's see it's not a real campaign it's a campaign I ran um, just to test some things out See here. All 
All right, so I'm going to actually show you guys the type of data, you type of um, difference that an ad makes as far as your CTR. So let me actually pull this up. Give me one second. John, while I pull this up, can you give me talk to him a little bit? Talk to the people. That shit, they don't want to hear me now, boy. You got everybody all hyped up. Give them this real, give them this real shit, man. Oh. Um. <laughs> yeah, Mike Jones was like, she creep spitting that crack. <laughs> yeah, 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 no doubt, no doubt. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, what you said, uh, you know, really made a good point. Um, you know, a lot of the times, you know, and that's one of the things that were kind of, you know, nuts for split testing. Um, and, and like I say, I, and I think I said this yesterday, like, um, one of the main things is just you know just just constantly just constantly testing. Even though we'll find something that's working well, um, we won't like completely turn everything else off. Um, normally, anyway, um, you know we'll still run. And and let me tell you what this is going to do too. Like so, we'll we'll still run some other snippets. Like we'll still run uh, some other variations a little bit. Um, but we'll we'll send a majority of the traffic to that page that's actually doing the best. Um, you know, and then we could like send a little bit of traffic to some of the others. But so what that's going to do is not only allow you to continue to test because you may find something that, that converts even better than what you already have, but it'll also kind of help keep the affiliates at bay who's just looking to swipe your shit because they're not going to only see your good shit. They're going to see some of the shit that's not running as well. And then um, even to get a little bit more advanced, it all depends, but you can actually look and see when the like your best day for sales after you've ran for like a week, two weeks, you'll know like what days you get more sales in, what times, whatever the case may be. Then you can start, you know, only running your top performing creative during those times. And then the rest of the times, you know, you'll still run that one, but you'll run all your other uh, the, the creatives you're testing as well. Um, so that in the time frames when in the time frames when things are you you you're making your heart highest ROI when things are really selling then boom you're only running that uh that variation is that, that's converting the best for you and then during the other times you know when things are just kind of mediocre or you know you're, it's not the best hours of the day or not the best day of the week for you then that's when you'll run you know all your variations um you know during that time so you're testing you're keeping the affiliates at bay and you're still running your best creative um, so that you're, you know, obviously still making money at the same time, you know, so, um, and that's mainly why, you know, that's kind of, kind of what we prefer to do when we're doing this kind of stuff, so. All right, Mr. Abui. Nice, you looking? nice, nice, nice. I'm looking, uh, looking good here. I got me, I think, I think we're good to go. Just want to actually get the right dates here. So you okay, you gotcha. See. Yeah, no problem. Okay, here we go. All right, so um, I don't know if you guys can see, but let me actually see if I can. Well, before you even get into that, um, Robert was asking, how can you um, run at select times? Like you'll have to, like some things will allow you to do what they call day parting, um, Rob. Um, I think you said Bob, which is what most people call you. So, so like certain networks will allow you to day part, so you can like actually click the hours of the day when you want your ad to be served. Um, and some of them don't have that, so some some of them. You'll have to actually, um, you know, like manually go in um, and like turn off or on your ads. But as far as um, like showing all your creatives or showing, uh, you know, showing all of them or not showing uh, some of them, I think you're creeping over that. As far as landing page genius goes, like you can turn certain snippets off, you can turn certain ones on, um, you know, so stuff like that is how you would actually. Uh, do it do it at select times. You have to actually manually go in and cut your ad on or off within Bang or whatever it is. But I think is Bang allowed day parting, um, Shakri? Yeah, they do. Um but you know me I'm paranoid, I don't trust Yeah, them. I mean yeah, I know we really yeah. Yeah. We just man if we do it we kinda do it manually but manually. but anyway, yeah. So so go ahead. All right, so yeah, so we got some good data here. So this is um like I mean maybe a couple of days worth of data, and I want to show you guys the difference an ad makes. All right, so if you guys can see, can you guys see the data here? Um, okay. Are right, you guys awake? I don't see anybody. Everybody good? Okay. Ross. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so. All right, so uh, so so let's look at the first ad. The first ad here is three four three four five one two zero zero four two three. It had three hundred and eighty two visitors. 
all right and this is uh this is one day right now if I scroll down and another ad had 33 visitors now I, I want you guys to remember all these ads are rotated evenly all right so we have about 20 some ads here they all were rotated evenly um, no no, no one ad got more um, more like uh, display you know shown than any any, any other one, um, and one had 33 visitors and one had 382 visitors. That's a difference of CTR. All right, so you have one um, one ad that had such a high CTR that we got 382 visitors, and one had 33, and one had you know 55 visitors, 63. So we basically took. We basically tested so many ads to the point where we increased our traffic by 10. So if you guys would have came and created an ad like this, which is, you know, ad 235, 3327, 235, um, you would have only got 33 visitors and you would have been like, fuck, you know, I want, I need to get more traffic. What do I do? Uh, uh. But if you would have just step tested more ads, you could have increased your traffic tenfold. All right. And I want to stress this again, this is all rotated evenly. The only difference is that one got more clicks because it had a better CTR than the others. All right, so that's the, that's the first thing I highly recommend is that you write ads and focus on the CTR of, um, of, of the ad. Try to find ads that get a high CTR, high click-through rate. The CTR means click-through rate. All right, so that means that, you know, if each ad showed ten times, you know this one might have showed once. I mean, this one, you know, probably had one click, and this one probably had, you know, um, five clicks, six clicks, or whatever. So um, that's a that's a big difference, man. That's a huge difference. You know, it's like ten times more traffic, and um, you know, it's it's in today's you know environment with PPC, um, that's tough to do. Um, when you've already maxed out your, your bids and maxed out your 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 um your traffic and you know you, you bid as high as you can and your ROI you know without your ROI tanking, you know the best next thing the best thing you can do is really take the traffic you have, and 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 really um you know milk it for what it's worth. And the way we do that is through your CTA, your CTR. Um, and then what we do is we optimize um we optimize uh the lander. For the highest EPC, so um, so what, what's, what might happen here, as you can see here, um, we got some conversions. Um, we got some other other ads that got conversions, and what Greg always taught us was EP, EPCM. So you don't just want to look at your EPCs; you want to look at your earnings per thousand impressions, which you have to factor in. Um, with the future, you have to factor in the CTR. But what we do is we notice is that if you focus more on your on your in your ad as far as your CTR and then try to boost the conversions using you know our headlines and our subheadlines um, that's actually it actually works out better so and just to kind of clarify what you'll find is if you write two different ads one may have a really high CTR and one may have an okay CTR but the okay CTR is the one getting all the conversions so what we do is, is you know we used to like say okay well screw the high CTR ad we'll just go with the lowest CTR ad because it's getting more conversions and making more money, right? Um, but now what we do is we say, you know, okay, um, let's focus on the high CTR ad. We know we're getting conversions, so let's go in and change the page, elements of the page, to try to boost the conversions. Because not only is the CTR going to get you more clicks and more traffic, they're also going to get you a ch cheaper uh, cost per click. And they're also going to be competing. They're also going to beat out your competition because your competition's ad aren't, aren't as good as yours, and therefore you're going to be paying less money, and you're going to be able to knock them out the water. Um, and that's what a guy did to me when I first kind of started back. Um, I, I, had, I had one of my early successful campaigns I had in like background checks and stuff like that, and I had an ad that was number one for like three weeks, and I was making like 200 bucks a day, and uh, I was being like bidding like a dollar. And my ad was better than everybody else's. But I was an affiliate. I didn't have a landing page. And all I was doing was direct linking. So another guy came in, swiped my ad, and made a few changes. And I noticed like he was testing maybe four or five different things. So I'm like, damn, you know, he took my ad, but he's like changing up you know, here and there. But next thing I knew, this motherfucker was all over the place. I mean, I couldn't even get any traffic because he was outbidding me because he had a better CTR. He was getting a cheaper price. 
And he was an affiliate too. So I was like, damn, this motherfucker came in and it took all of my traffic because he decided to test a little bit more, get a higher CTR, lower his cost, and was able to run his ad more and actually bid higher um, just to get me, knock me out the water. So I had to stop advertising. Yeah, you know, damn, exactly, you know. So, um, so yeah, man, you know, so 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 it, this is war. I look at this as war. You know, you, this is you're going to war. My competition, I'm out to um, kill them, not physically kill them, but I'm out to kill them. And the way you do that is, is you get an ad that has a really, 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 really high CTR, um, something that gets a lot of traffic, a lot of visitors. Bang is gonna see it, and Bang is gonna be like, oh shit, this 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 guy's ad is really killing it, you know. Because they get paid when, when people click. So they want ads that get people to click. So if, we, if your ad is getting 5 out of 10 people to click and my ad is getting 8 out of 10 people to click, who does Bang want, you know, whose ad does Bang want to show? You know, Bang wants to show my ad, not your ad. You know, they make more money when they show my ad. So they're going to slowly knock you out the water. They, they're not going to totally, you know, just throw you to the wayside because they still want you to stick around still want your money. You know, they don't want you to have a bad taste in your mouth. But they're going to start sending me more traffic. And it's going to be cheaper. You know what I mean? And I'm laughing to the bank. And if we're, if we're promoting the same product and we're in the same niche, you know, my ROI, my ROI, my profit margin is higher than yours. So guess what I might do? I might pull a, you know, I might pull a, a G move and I might go in and bid it's so high to where I don't even make any money. I'm just bidding high enough just to drive you out the market. So I might not make no money for a week or two. And I might just drive all my bids up to five, six bucks. And, because I'm making more money, I have a better ad, and I'm have, I'm, I've done more optimizing. I know I'm making more money than you, so I can charge, so I can spend more as far as my cost per click. And so I'll just go ahead and drive you out the market by just raising up the bids and driving up the price. So this is competition, and all this is about competition. Is all this is about you know taking over, taking over the block, taking over your market, and you can't do that unless you optimize, unless you um, you know really, really, really start. Um, taking this stuff serious, and it starts with the ad. Find an ad that gets a really, really high CTR, and try to try to massage, um, try to massage the lander, um, try to massage the lander for for conversions. All right, so that's a technique we use. But but again, like you know, we use so many keywords, and um, you know, we use so many keywords. We used to be, we have so many different things going on in our campaigns that we don't really get into all that you know high bid and stuff. But um, I mean, if we ever did decide to do that, I mean, you know, we would, we could, I can probably drive anybody out the market because, um, you know, we're going to definitely do way more testing than, than they are. So I'm just telling you how these other guys think. Um, and then they'll go take over the block. You know, we'll go and, you know, have four or five different, you know, campaigns that promote the same product under different advertorials or different accounts and really take over the whole block and drive all, out, drive all the competition out, out the way. Because right, we're doing more, we're doing more testing, we're doing more optimization. Uh, we know what's working. Um, you know, I might, you know, I have four or five ads. I, I might have one ad against the high CTR, but I might have four or five backup ads ready to go. So, you know, so I mean, that's that's part of it. That, that that's where that's where the money is. It's, it's not necessarily in uh, what do I promote. I mean, that's part of it. It's part of it. You know, what do I promote? You know, what I mean, that's 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 part. You know, um, so you know, that's that's just that's part of it. I'm trying to think of an analogy here, but. Um, you know, people. You know, you. You know, sometimes you want to go out and you know, see some nice ladies or whatever. So you like me, I go to strip club, but it's only part of it. You know, you you gotta have some money in your hand. You know, you gotta go in there with some dollars. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you gotta you gotta it, just because you have one thing, one part of the one part of the system down does not mean you gonna you know you're gonna get to the goal. You know what I'm saying? So um, this is this is actually the most important part. All right. Um, and so scaling. So let's talk about scaling. Um. The best thing you can do to scale, um, like I said, is, is trying to get a better ad as far as CTR. But next to that is add more keywords. Um, start adding more keywords. And as you guys saw from the SpyFu example, um, it's pretty easy to do. You know, you can go in and simply um, just, just, just uh, you know, type in a type in a domain and um, just swipe the whole swipe the whole keyword list. You know, that I grab them all. Grab the, grab their organic keyword list. Grab their paid keyword list, and throw them in there. Cause you never know what's gonna get traffic. Um, and you guys could, like I said, you always could go the more targeted route. You can go with very high traffic keywords. You can do that. 
Um, but for the most part, um, if you're not getting any traffic like that, definitely, definitely go out and try to grab as many keywords as you can. And I wouldn't do more than 50,000 um, starting out because Bing is thinking like, well, you know, there's absolutely no way that you can find 50,000 relevant keywords to this campaign. I mean, you know, you got a weight loss product and weight loss diet, diet pills. That's all I can think of. That's what they're thinking. Like, you know, this guy has thousands and thousands of keywords. It's mean, impossible. But I think they know now that they have these tools out here, keyword tools that people are trying to use and people are trying to get a look up on the competition. So I think they, I think they, um, they understand that, you know, you're going to have a lot of keywords. And, you know, they have a 100,000 keyword limit in their in, per account. So, um, so yeah, so they, say, so they definitely know that, that um, you know, you, you're going to use a lot of keywords or, or that some people will need to do that. Um, otherwise, they wouldn't have a 100K, you know, keyword limit in, 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 the, in the account. So, um, so add more keywords. Uh, that's the first thing you need to do. Um, next thing you can do is, and when, I, when I say add more keywords, add more targeted keywords. And what you also can do is add more keywords from, from other related um, demographic niches. So if you're in diet, um, I think someone yesterday on the call asked, you know, how do you find um, other demographic-based keywords? So real quick here, I'm going to go show you guys a tool. I think uh, you guys know about this, but it's called Quantcast. And um, you can type in a certain site. Oh, I spelled it wrong. Please QA. Yeah. So quantcast.com, you can actually type in a certain site, and what, what it'll do is it'll tell you um, what audience frequents there. It'll, it'll give you the, the, uh, their demographic profile of that site. And then you, it'll also tell you, like, what else they're interested in, what other sites they go to. So, you know, if I go to Google and type in weight loss, and I can go and grab, let's actually go and grab Miracle. Oh man, got to sneeze. And um, let's go and see if we can find something with miracle. Uh, couldn't find anything there. What's that? I was going to say um, you could do something like uh, uh, Jenny Craig, Weight Watcher, something like that. This, you know, a big. Yeah, something bigger. Yeah, bigger, um, bigger, bigger joint. That's what I normally do when I go on. Well, I don't think it's, a, yeah, I don't think it's, a, um, I think it's something wrong with Quantcast or something because it's not showing up anything. So I don't know what's going on. So if I go to Jenny. Jenny let's just try any side. let's just see if it's working because okay it is working all right so what's the what's a big diet site let me say Jenny Craig but I don't see it coming up uh, okay let me see Yeah, I'm gonna go grab it here. And I know Nutrisystem too, um, they're pretty big. All right, so oh, nothing. So let's try Weight Watchers here. So go back. I can't spell, so I'm not gonna even try to spell it. I'm just gonna go and copy and paste. Man. No, no, I'm just constantly clicking the wrong stuff. Ah, it's not coming up either. Yeah, I think something's wrong with freaking Quantcast or something. Cause, okay, here we go. Yeah, all right. I think I was doing something wrong. All right, so um, if you scroll down, it says audience also likes. Um, and it gives a affinity to how much they like, uh, what, what else they like. So, so if it's like 1.2, Basically says that you know this person is 1.2 times more likely to visit this site um, 
you know, if they visit Weight Watchers. So this isn't a great affinity. You want something like more in the hundreds. But um, you can see here, um, if you click on um, audience also likes at the bottom, or I'm sorry, see more, it'll show you like, okay, you like dining fitness, but the next affinity is three point. So uh, they also, uh, so they also like um, home and family. So um, that's what we got our, you know, home furnishing, uh, family type of related keywords. Obviously, food, cruises, so recipes. Um, so this is how you can get some ideas about um, what other things, you, other keywords you can branch out to. But after a while, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just gonna throw any keywords in there <laughs> because at the end of the day, like a little bit more than half of the audience on Bing is gonna be female. Um, so it's kind of like, well, shit. You know, if they click the ad, you know, um, you know, obviously they're interested. The only thing about that is, is that you can get into quality score issues and, and Bing will ban your account if you have too many keywords that have nothing to do with what you're selling. So, um, you know, I know you guys want to go and branch out to something like food. Food, I can see working. Um, Bing might not have too much of an issue with, with a food keywords. Um, but if you do what we did, like go to cruise keywords, you know, um, and try to, um, you know, have you know, a diet pill, you know, they may, they may cause some quality issues and they may take issue to you doing that. Um, but like I said, um, something we've done, um, and I think that's something you can get away with if you do it correctly. Uh, but for the most part nowadays, we like to just add more keywords and really uh, milk the tra traffic we have. So Quantcast is definitely is a great tool. Um, definitely sign up for a free trial. Not free trial. I'm sorry. I think it's free. Sign up for their free um, service and play around with it. It really is a great, great tool. They have a uh, they have a great tool called Planner. Um, I don't want to maybe not get into this, but let me actually show you guys. Yeah, they have a planner too. So I want to show you guys some cool, cool shit here. So. All right, so um, so let me um, let me scroll in here. Okay, so the planner tool basically allows you to define your audience, and then it shows sites that has that audience with the highest number of uh, composition. So let's say you're selling a product that you know, um, you know, Caucasian women um, that have a lot of money, you know, let's say female, and that um, let's say or over four over thirty five let's just say over forty so older rich well not rich but older affluent um, Caucasian women over forty we can figure out and sort by um, composition what site they frequent the most or what site has that particular audience profile has the highest audience profile. Um, of that particular demographic, and we see here is MacombDaily.com is the site that has the highest percentage of that particular um, audience, and it looks like it's a news type of site. Um, I don't know; I've never been to the site, but um, if we have any older white ladies on here, um, maybe you've heard of it. <laughs> I don't know, but. Uh, but uh, but yeah. So that's that's another that's a, that's a really a great tool to figure out where your audience is at, what they're interested in, and um, really get some some keyword ideas. Um, you also can let's see let's let's try a little, another example here. Uh, let's look at males. I want to know what males, eighteen to twenty, are interested in, and the race. Let's see what they're doing. Uh, Reverse GIF, Game of Ranks, Dorkly.com, Downloads, Emulator Zone. Okay, so just to um, show you that this is pretty accurate. All right, so, you know, they're uploading animated GIFs, and it plays it back in reverse. So, so, um, so yeah, pretty 
pretty much, um, as you can see, that the young audience, um, they pretty much um, have no lives, and this is pretty, you know, pointless. But um, it kind of goes it's just just to show you that this is uh, this is pretty um, it's pretty accurate. Um, can you get the demographics for an interest or keyword via Quantcast? Can you get uh, for interest? Um, you can do it by category. So, so you can click on category and select category. Um, you can't do it by keyword, um, but let's say you want to do um, see to so diet and fitness, and it'll give a it'll give a, um, a list of sites and diet and fitness. Um, and you can do it, do it that way, and it shows the top sites. So, Calvin Cooking, Fitness Magazine, Spark People, and so you can actually use these sites to actually take the keywords. So you can actually go straight to Spot Food, grab these keywords, go to Spot Food, and um, put these keywords in um, for ideas. So if you're having a hard time trying to figure out which which sites to use for keywords, you can use these, these sites, and I can guarantee that these sites are going to have a large keyword list, at least an organic keyword list, because these are organic, really highly organic sites. They may not be advertising on Google and Bing, um, like for paid advertising, but if they're, they're going to be ranked pretty high, and if Quantcast is ranking them, they're going to be pre ranked pretty high, and um, and you can definitely get a lot of, um, lot of organic keywords. Um, I have a question here. When setting up a campaign under advanced location settings, which option do you normally choose? Show as the people search. Okay, yeah. So it's kind of uh, not related to what we're talking about here, but um, but yeah. So in Bing, um, let me actually log in. So um, so Bing actually, when you create your campaign under settings, um, so I think it's under targeting. So this is actually the Bing's editor tool. Um, we, you know, we can do stuff from here without logging in. Um, you can select different options: show ads to people anywhere in the world, show ads to people only in select locations, or near a certain area. What we like to do, um, I only like I like to show ads only to people in the location, because you have people who are in the U.S. maybe using Google Canada or people in the U.S. using Google Philippines. For some reason, or people in the Philippines using Google U.S. So I don't, if I have a product that only ships to U.S. customers, I don't want people outside of the U.S. viewing the site because I can't make money from them. So it's like a waste of money. So I only want people clicking my ads I can make money from. And if I can't make money from someone outside the U.S., I do not want people outside of the U.S. looking at my ad. So I only want to show ads to people in my select location that my product, um, product is able to uh to, to sell to all right so with that said we can take some questions here um that's pretty much the oh you know what i'm sorry i wanted to go over um the banning issues that's right so um so let me go over that real quick so the, the, fortunately this is very simple okay bang will ban you if they find out you're using a advertorial um but i don't even know if it's always the advertorial a lot of advertorials use use uh exit pops so it may be, excuse me. So it may be that they will ban you um, because you have an exit pop for whatever reason. It, who, who fucking knows, right? I mean, they, they will ban you for whatever you know. Not to say that it always happens out of nowhere, but if they don't like something you're doing, they will ban you. And a lot of times, it's for using an advertorial, using an exit pop, having too many unrelated keywords in your campaign. And I'm talking about in the, in the tens of thousands that have nothing to do with you know what you're selling. Um, and those are the few reasons, or something like with billing, like you know, you you, you screwed up your billing um, address, you know, you, you didn't have the right number there, or something like that, right? So they'll ban you. So it's a ban that says, hey, we, you know, it's an automated ban that they do to say, hey, you know, you can't advertise with your name and your car number and your address. So nice. Um, so. Basically, they're saying like you know, okay, so you can't, you don't, your address is is 100% gone. You can never advertise with this address again, all right. And you know, your name to that address is was is, was linking. So, um, so it's not yeah, it's not just the name, but it's the address mainly, because um, you know people have you know there's plenty of Davids out there, there's plenty of Evans out there. So, 
um, I don't think they're going to ban your name, but it's the address and the car, obviously the car number that they're going to ban, right? So all you need to do, it's very simple, and I'm going to actually put this um, in a new slide here. So let me actually do, and I actually thought, all right, so, so what you want to do is you want to get a business bank account. So you need a business bank account. Um, you guys should already have a business bank account, um, business checking. Um, you can get, we highly recommend, we recommend Bank of America, um, highly recommend, uh, but get a checking account, business checking account, you know, um, if you guys have been in business and doing some stuff, you should, you should have a LLC, you should have a corporation, something like that, so just open up a new account or something like that, uh, or even use your existing account, um, so that's number one, um, if you don't have a business checking account, just start a corporation, do what, you know, go to legalzoom.com or something like that. Spend you know 199 bucks, whatever that their that's their thing is they have. You know, get a DBA. Um, you know, I, I'm not a fucking lawyer, so I don't know exactly everything to do, but you get the point. Like, you know, get a business checking. All right, so that's number one. The next thing to do. Um, so the next thing to do that you need to do is get an employee. card. Now, here's the thing. The employee does not need to be real. And, but one, one thing, Shukri, um, yeah. go over and type in debit because it is it's an employee debit card. It's not an employee credit card. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. It's Very an good. employee debit card. Very good. I, I see you eating over there. You got me some or you just Sorry, I just yeah, I ran to the store real quick, guys, and got some beer and some uh, beef flanks, uh jerky. Um, hungry as hell, ready to start drinking. So I got some over here, man. You got to finish your presentation. Make sure you do a good enough job, then you can get some beef flank jerky. Oh, I, I can get you, you. Okay, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right um, so yeah, so that's a point in point. It's a debit card, like it's not a credit card. So you don't have to worry about like credit. You know, if you have shitty credit, you know. If you have a good enough credit to um, get a checking account, you should be fine. All right, so it's an employee debit card. And you just make up a name. You know, we go to fake name generator. You know, actually, don't do that. Um, use different sources. You don't want everybody coming up with the same name, you know. Um, so find a source, come up with a, with a name, maybe scan through the white pages, come up with something, right? And that's all you need to have. You know, as a matter of fact, you know, the way we order our cards, the only thing the only thing they ask for is what is the name of your employee, and where do we send the card? That's it. All right. So this person can be totally made up, imaginary. It does not matter. Um, they just want to know that the person ordering the cards is you. So um, so just make sure that you put your. You know, they're gonna ask you for your information, like what's your name, what's your you know, um, what's your 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 EIN number, um, and you know what's the name of the person that you know what's the name of your employee that you want to send the card. You know. So you make up, like, say, Jackie, you know, Janet Jackie. All right. Um, so that's your, that's, that's, your, um, that's your new employee. You just put that name in. Actually, let me actually show you guys how, Baker, how it works with Baker America. So because a lot of guys are like, oh, my God, I can't, I, what I do? Um, let me type in Baker America employee um, debit card. All right, so so this is uh yeah man too much porn man you're right <laughs> um so request debit card right so this is business employee debit card click request debit card and they ask you for your name your tax ID your first name and last name your information and then um they should at first. And then you just, all you do here is you, if you see what I'm doing, it asks for the car holder's name. That's all it does, all right? doesn't ask for anything else but their name. So you can make the person up, all right? Now, the second thing you do is just get an address. So you can either do this by getting a P.O. box or UPS store. 
or you can use an address of your family member. Just make sure that family member hadn't ran on Bang before, and that and that address right. has been flagged. But uh, yeah, obviously, most I'm pretty sure they have it. Exactly. You know. Exactly. Exactly. Or a uh, friend's address. You know, I make sure that, like I said, like like you said, make sure these these addresses are banned by by Bang or Google. All right. And then once you get that address, um, you call up your bank and say, "Hey, you know, I want new address." attached to new employee card. All right, now this is important because you want the card associated, this new card, you know, Janet Jack Me, which is your employee, you want this new card, you want this new you want that address associated with that card. You don't want the address on file with your company. So your company may be myaddress.com, but you want you know, another address um, attached to that employee because you've been banned, so you need a different address. So you want the new employee card um, to be um, attached to a totally different address. And you need to call them up and let them know, I have a new address for um, this particular card I want attached to it. And so therefore, you have a new card with a new name with a different address and totally different identity. But it's attached to the same account. So that's all you do. I mean, we have tons of cars. I mean, it's it's um um it's it's pretty 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 simple. And that's all there is to it. You don't need to be a real person. Don't stress that out. It's just a name they ask for, um, and uh, you can get two, three, four of them. Um, and I you know I would even think you probably even could make just take somebody else's address. I mean, I, I to me, I mean, I haven't tried that, but. It, it makes sense why you can do that. I mean, unless they, you, you know, you probably want to cut off any type of, um, um, any type of what do you what do you call it, um, mail being sent to that. To, to yeah. The yeah. Yeah. Like I mean, it's so it's so cheap. Excuse me, I know I'm eating and talking. Sorry, but it's so cheap to just get a PO box or something. Like I would, not with our accounts anyway. Like, because usually I handle the setup of, of all that stuff, and um, I normally will. Make sure to get PO box or UPS USPS box or UPS box, whatever the case may be. Um, so you know, I would just go ahead and invest in it and do that. And Ross, yeah. um, I'm not actually sure if you can do that with Bank of America from from outside the U.S., but I believe they have an international um where you can get an international account. But you probably want to call with them and check just to make sure, Ross. I'm not 100 percent sure on that though. Yeah, so uh Josh asks, um, can you can Bang check your card against their address? Yeah. Um I mean that's what they do. I mean that's what we figured out after getting banned a hundred times. Um they they check the uh address and they check um the name on the card and see if they check to see if those things match. Um and can you use VCCs, virtual credit cards? Uh yeah, you can use virtual credit cards. Right? John, he was using VCC. Well, um, we were using them, but it seems like they're starting to catch up. So, you know, we were using them. They were working okay. And then sometimes we get banned, and they wouldn't tell us why. They just say it was a billing issue. So it, it seems to me like they're starting to catch up with the um, virtual credit cards, to be completely honest with you. Um, like I say, we used them in the past. Now that we have this trip with Bank of America, um, and, and not just Bank of America offers this either. Wells Fargo does. Um, most of your big banks um, will offer it. I can tell you for sure, like your little local mom and pop type joints, um, they don't do it. They have uh, Chase should offer that, Mark. I would imagine so. I mean, they're big time, so I would imagine they would allow you to have um, several employee um, debit cards for sure. Yeah, yeah, so, but yeah, I don't know about the uh, BCCs. To be honest, it could be. Um, you know, it it can be a little iffy right right around now, Josh. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, um, like I said, I mean, the, it's it's easy enough to order a new car with a, with a new name. I mean, it, that's the easiest thing in the world. So. And what you can do too, um, for Josh and for other guys who's asking about this, who's going to get this set up, go ahead and get yourself. Um, tell them you need three employee cards. Just get three right off the bat. Go ahead and get three different P.O. boxes or three different UPS. Now, I'll be honest. Like, the UPS uh, store, their boxes are more expensive, at least here in Savannah. I don't know how it is everywhere else. Their boxes, like, nine, like 
hundred twenty bucks or ninety bucks for three day for for three months, and I can get six months um, of a PO box for like thirty dollars. <laughs> so um, the PO boxes seem to work better. But you know, one thing I like to try to do is 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 get the PO box in different zip codes. You know, you don't have to be that paranoid. We're just extra paranoid because we've been banned so many times in the past. But you know, what we're doing now is working for us. Um, so, you know, the PO boxes work fine. Um, the UPS um, store um, boxes, you know, work work pretty well. Um, you know, so so you can do any of those, and I would I would you know just recommend recommend going that route. And for you guys, as you know, not not in the U.S. Um, I'm sure you guys probably got a big thing. I hear like Australia though, from from what a lot of our um, clients tell us is that um, Australia has some really really strong uh, rules over there about like what you what you can and can't do um so i don't know if they'll allow the banks there to give you employee debit cards without having any information but it seems that they would because i mean let's just looking at it from a from you know from that angle if you've got employees you've got you know five six employees and they're all they're out like going to different stores for different jobs let's say you own a construction company and this one guy's going out to get plywood this other guy's going out to get sheetrock and they're going to different stores um, you you don't want them to all just have to use your card, you know. So you just want them to have separate employee cards so that they can do their ordering and have their own stuff running for the jobs they're working on without have, having to bother you, you know, um, personally. So you know that's the theory behind it, and I'm sure that pretty much most big banks will will have this option for you guys for sure. So um, so anyway, um, just wanted to chime chime in on that, Shakri. So. Cool, cool, cool. Um, and I think, oh yeah, last thing. Um, make sure you, once you get that address changed and attached to that new card, make sure you talk to at least three different people to make sure that they've actually changed changed the address. Um, because what can happen is, is that they can tell you that yeah, oh yeah, you know, I attached the new address to the card, everything's good to go, and you go try to add your card to bang and get banned, right? Um, make sure confirm that that card. Um, address has changed somehow. Um, what I did was is that uh, the, one of the, the, the address that we, the, the new address that we used had a different zip code than, than uh, my other card. So what I did was um, I just went to the gas station and put the card in and tried to get like $10 worth of gas. And I used uh, the wrong zip code. Um, well, I used, I used a zip code that I knew shouldn't have been on, attached to that card. And when I did that, it it um, it it, um, it didn't let me you know use the card. So it showed me that the 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 address was changed. So I mean that's one way, kind of a you know hacky way to go about doing it. But you want to make sure that that you know you don't waste a card, um, a whole card, you know on um, you know want wrong information from your your bank teller or whatever who's telling you on the phone that you know they they changed the address. So so definitely I would definitely um, once you get once you get it changed, give it a couple of days. Um, give it, I think, give it 48, 48 hours. hours. Yeah, it's yeah. 48 hours. Um, and, and like Shakri said, um, so what you want to do, because you got to look at it, you've paid for this P.O. box now, and then once you enter the P.O. box in and bang, when you're creating the account, you know, you're entering the address with the card, everything like that. And if these jackasses hadn't changed it on the other end, on the other end of, uh, it, it, it Bank of America, whatever the bank is, then you pretty much just wasted your, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 bucks on that address that you just paid for. So, like you said, you know, usually it can take up to 48 hours. So, give it a couple of days, run up to the gas station, you know, stick it in there, um, you know, stick it in the card machine. And, you know, normally it just asks you for a zip code that's associated with the card. And the zip code, you know, if it's the right zip code and it works, then obviously, you know, they've changed it. Um, you know, and if you enter that zip code and it hadn't, call the ass back up and tell them, <laughs> you know, because we've actually had to do that. We have, have have had to call like two or three times and they'll just tell you, yep, I got it changed. And I don't know if they're just lying for the sake of just because they don't know how to do it and don't want to ask their manager and get in trouble or whatever the case is. But they um, will definitely tell us they did it. And there's been several times when it hadn't been done. So you just kind of want to stay on top of that. Um, and let's see. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's a good point, David. Like, so just because these cards have been banned at Bing, 
them bitches still good on Google, on AdWords. So, like, don't throw them away. Don't, like, get rid of them completely because you can still go to Google um, and, and use them as, use that card to pay with as well. So it's, it's still going to be good there. And because some people think for some reason that, like, Google and Bang talk to each other and they keep this um, database of, uh, <laughs> like, if you've been banned at Bang, we're going to tell Google about you, too. And if you go over there, we're going to tell them to fucking man you, too. Nah, it doesn't work that way. Like, those two have no sort of communication. Their servers don't talk to each other or anything like that. So you guys are good to go if it gets banned and, and vice versa. If you get banned on Google AdWords but you hadn't used that card on Bing, you're good to go on Bing as well. Um, and let me just answer John Barry's question real quick. John wants to know, um, all right, so are you guys using VPS or just accessing the accounts from the same IP? No same IP, John. Definitely not. Um, we use a cloud, um, you know, a cloud server. So, huh? Okay, cool. Yeah, Shakri says he's going to show you that. So right I'm now. not sure him right now. Yeah, um, so um, I'll, I I'll let him show you guys. Yeah. So, yeah, it's going to be real quick. I just want to show you. Um, this is uh, what you call a uh, remote desktop connection. And these are all different VPSs we have on our, um, for our bank account. So, so I can go in and access different different accounts here by just putting put it in the uh the uh IP of the computer and just click and connect. So um so yeah we have definitely def definitely a different VPS for each uh account. Different IP. Now I'm not saying that you have to do that. You probably can get away with not doing that. Um but you know we're actually paranoid over here. So I'm gonna change the presenter. Let me unmute myself. Uh, yeah, you can you can go ahead and do that. I want to talk to these guys about um, the adult dating um, workshop and stuff like that. So just switch it over, change, make okay. the presenter, and, and I can show these guys that stuff. Okay. All right, yeah, you, you're, there you go. Okay, cool. All right, guys, um, let me get my question box back out here so I can see if anything. All right, oh, uh, cloud servers, Brian, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, oh, nice, Ross. I like that it makes sense now. Awesome, man. Awesome, awesome. Um, so, so, um, Brian, like normally, I just tell, give people out, um, um, like one name for a cloud server because there's so many, and then people start to use the same one, and it and it leads what you know what what's called a footprint in the industry where you know Bang and Google are recognized if all the same things are going on. But yeah, if you Google um cloud server, man, you'll be good. There's so many of them, and they're usually around the same price. Um. And oh, one one other tip for you guys, real quick. You don't necessarily. <laughs> um, I've done this before when we very first got started <laughs> doing um like CPA marketing, doing it a, a little bit black hat. Like you don't want to like tell them like, all right, guys, I'm using your cloud server because I, I want to cloak my shit and I want to run stuff that Bang and Google doesn't allow me to run. <laughs> You're like, don't go in like you just tell them like, listen, I got different clients that I manage, and it just makes it easier for me to manage everybody through the cloud. All right. Um, and they don't care. They don't really care. But you don't want to let them know. And you want to use a real address. Everything needs to be real when you're talking to the cloud server people to get your cloud set up. Because now they've gotten this advantage. Here's what they did. Um, because obviously we've used several different cloud services and, and stuff, stuff like that. They will, they're looking at the number you're calling from. Um, they just want you to verify the number you call from. Whatever address you use. Um, like for us, I used our business address. Um, for our office that we're in right now, and uh, so they'll they'll look. He goes, okay, what's the closest interstate highway to you? And he's like, which one's the closest? So you gotta like you can't just use a fake address with them, which you don't need to anyway. But I'm just letting you know for fraud because what what's been happening with those guys is people will get a cloud server, make up a bunch of fake addresses, and then they'll do like all kind of weird like you know, real racially crazy type of sites and stuff with like just stuff that should not be on the internet. People were shooting people and killings and all kind of crazy shit. And they'll use it through a cloud server um so that they can't get the technic and they'll do like all this other some big scam that's going on now, um the FBI uh joint where people will send in uh they'll uh like send out 
different messages telling people like, um, you, you know, you've been flagged for searching for like child pornography. Duh, duh, duh. You made the FBI's blacklist. Like, um, to be taken off the blacklist, you know, you need to fill out this form and send a payment of ninety-seven dollars, uh, two hundred ninety-seven dollars here. And people were falling for that shit. But like, so that guy, that was real big. And it's that's that kind of stuff is just that's not black hat. That's just dumb stuff. Like, just you know, that's just crook type shit so so a lot of these um cloud companies were getting in trouble because of it so that's why you know they're getting real tight on their um on their security and everything like that so so just make sure you give them real information when you call them up guys <clears throat> all right so so that's pretty much the end of day three um you know of of for for bang um you know i pretty much just took you guys from from start to end on what we're doing, you know, as far as like what what needs to be done, actually bank on bang. I know there it can seem a little overwhelming. I remember when we first started doing it, um, I was like, what the fuck, a cloud server? How do we access all this stuff? <laughs> we were just looking at each other like, what in the hell? <laughs> like, where do we start? Um, you know, so I, hopefully we broke it down a little bit by bit. The recordings are, uh, you know, I got links that I pasted in there for you guys earlier. If you don't see it, go to the chat box and scroll up. I got them in there. I, um, I also put a link to Grace Cloaker in there as well. Um, so, so cool. Um, no, David, I don't think the, I don't know. I don't know what, when Brittany's doing her Facebook presentation. Hers are Friday and Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, I'm not sure when she's, what time she's doing hers, to be honest. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see what's up. I, I have no clue when she's doing hers. I'm um, not sure. Um. But they'll be recorded at the same time. So if you, you know, if you miss one, if you want to like check mine recording, anything like that, you know, they'll be recorded. So, so what we're going to do, guys, um, Tuesday, October 29th, um, oh, she's 15th through the 17th. Okay. Brittany's the 15th through the 17th of November. So we're good to go. Um, man, shit. I guess I was the only one who got, <laughs> got, I just started like lickety split. I didn't want anybody to be like, uh, she pissed them off or uh, like I'm pissing them off because I started late. So I just wanted to get started with you guys as soon as possible. Um, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, need around bang. Yeah, I mean, it, there's there's a few things. Um, Bob, there's a few things. So, so anyway, so um, so as far as the adult dating workshop, uh, Tuesday, October 29th, Um, we're gonna start. We're gonna do two to three p.m. Um, the next day, Wednesday, October 30th, um, we're gonna do same time, two to three p.m. Um, Thursday we're going to take off. Um, it's Halloween here, and I got a bunch of shit to do with my kids. So Thursday we're going to take off. Let you guys absorb in the stuff that we went over Tuesday and Wednesday, and then Friday and Saturday we're going to do the same times: two two p.m. to three p.m. and um, Saturday two p.m. to three p.m. All right. And um, Harvey, let me see. Um, give me a scar. Yeah, yeah, you were Harvey. Yeah, you're good. All right. Um. And then, as, as you guys know, like I said, it was, it's a five-day joint, the adult dating one. So what we're going to do is obviously these are the four days of training days that I was talking about, and then we're going to have a Q&A day. I don't want to have the Q&A day right after the last day of training, and the reason for that is I find that it works best to take like a week off, give you guys time to actually go back over the replays, start implementing, start doing stuff, and then as you do it, you'll have more relevant questions. Um, like, I don't want you asking me, like, you know, what's a fetish funnel <laughs> on the Q&A when, <laughs> you know, we clearly went over that shit. So um, we're going to, you know, what I'm going to do is, you know, we'll go through these training days, boom, 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 boom. They're not really long trainings. I don't, I, you know, I, being that there's, there's more, we did, the reason I did more days in the adult dating workshops because um, I wanted to kind of just kind of split it up, boom, 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 so that it wouldn't be, like, you know, too overwhelming. And then the fifth day, um, I'll get you guys a, a time and a day for that. But it'll probably be like the following Saturday. Um, and then I'll get you guys a time and everything. But uh, so that's going to be the adult dating wo uh, workshop. And as you guys can see, I, um, let me just make sure, too. Can everybody see? Did all you guys see the stuff that I typed in the chat box, like a link to the cloaker and, um, and everything? Okay, cool. Yes. Okay, good, good. Got it. Perfect, perfect. So copy those links, guys. Those are the replay links. To day one and day two of Bang, um, yeah, Ro uh, uh, Roger, uh, Kevin, I'm sorry, Kevin, yeah, just go in the chat box and you'll see it. And um, also at the same time, I'm gonna send out, um, I'm gonna send out a, an email and it'll have all that stuff in it. Um, doo -doo -doo. yeah, um, the the adult dating, no, I'm gonna say it's more complex. Um, Rob, Robert just wanted to know if the adult dating is more complex than Bang. Um, 
I mean, it's got some moving parts, but you don't have to worry about cloaking and all that stuff. So, you know, I don't think it's quite as complex. But to be completely honest with any of this stuff, if you're running stuff on the Internet, you know, you're going to have, you know, some some uh, a little bit of a learning curve as far as like the technical stuff, you know, that that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, even with Facebook, you still got to deal with servers and all that kind of shit, you know. Um, but, but once you get past it, you know, it's, it's not that bad. But, um, but yeah, I mean, the, the adult dating is it's not complex, but there definitely will be, you know, certain things you're going to have like. But I'm going to show you guys the way to do it so that it's pretty, pretty fucking easy just going out and swiping shit and then, um, you know, We'll do a little bit of showing you guys how to improve ads and landers, but for the main part, just outsource it. Just tell 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 the guys that I'm gonna give you access to, like, hey, do this. I want it to look like this. I want you to do this and that, and just let them do it. I mean, if you got if you can afford it, it's not that expensive, so that's what I recommend. So so anyway, guys, that's the adult dating workshop. Um, and okay, um, yeah. So as far as the um. The done for you sales funnel, like um, the the uh, the ads and um, lander for your fetish funnel, will be sent over to you. Um, and you guys need to. Oh, this is one thing for all you guys that are on here. I'm going to obviously send out. No problem, Harvey. I'm gonna send out a link, uh, an email to you guys to tell you this. But but for all you guys that want to do adult dating and do like the funnel, um, that want to follow along, you guys are gonna need to get an autoresponder. Um, I recommend GetResponse or AWeber. We use GetResponse personally. I'm not a huge fan of AWeber, but they're okay too. So you guys want to go on a, you're going to want to get GetResponse, um, and uh, you know, and you'll 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 uh, you'll need that to actually start collecting emails and stuff. But but anyway, all that stuff will be in an email. All right. So so anyway, guys, um, that's the Bang um, Black Hat Extravaganza, and I know some of you guys, and this you know, obviously, I had some of you guys email me and was like, you know. Some of the shit seems a little daunting, a daunting of a task. So I just decided to come up with something to help uh, some of you guys out. Obviously, it's not for everybody. You guys know how to do this, and some of you do not. Um, so my screen just went black here. Sorry, guys. All right, so let me get my screen back up. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on. Am I still on, Shagree? Can you hear my um, voice? Okay. All right, cool. Well, as soon as I can get this back up, guys, um, I'll uh I'll continue, but like I was saying, so basically for you guys that um don't really feel like setting all this stuff up, um you know, and, and judging from the emails, some of you were like, "Fuck, I'm on it, I'm about to start, like get started right now," and uh, some of you guys were, you know, like, "Well, you know, this shit seems a little complex." Um, you know, I got like, "What do I do here? What do I do there?" All right, so um for you guys, basically what I decided to do, there are five really big, really hot niches. Um, you know, this this pretty much the hottest ones right now um, and tell you what let me uh let me just do this real quick guys let me get my go to webinar let me get my go to webinar back up and uh let me back up. oh yeah um Brian I uh I uh I put the Odes um contractors in my in the last um webinar but I'll uh I'll make sure to uh to put them back in here again. All right. So all right. So basically guys, um we're going to do this for five niches. Um I'm in it, you know, I'm not trying to like put a bunch of people into this cuz we're busy as hell as it is now, but I do understand that some of you guys want to get started in bang, but you just really I guess either A don't have the time or B, you know, there's a little bit of a learning curve. So so what we're going to do is this. The five niches you see right here, auto insurance, muscle enhancer, testosterone booster, skin, and diet. Um, those are five of the hottest niches right now <clears throat> as far as with mass appeal. Um, so what we're going to do is offer it to, you know, whichever five kind of first first come, first serve type of deal. But if you have interest in going in any of these five niches, um, you know, you can let us know. And basically what we're going to do is go in and uh, – and set everything up for you um, so you guys don't really have to worry about it. So basically we're going to get you guys 10 ads specific to that niche. Um, you're going to get one uh, one avatorial style lander, which is you guys know we told you avatorials is what we use at all times, what we love um, to use because they convert the best. Um, then we're also going to have 10 headlines set up in landing page genius um, for that avatorial that's going to be ready to test for you. And we're also going to get you guys 30,000 um, niche related keywords. 
and your cloaker setup. Now, you're going to need to have access to a cloaker. Um, I, I put the link in there for you guys to get access to Greg's cloaker, um, so we'll set that up for you. At the same time, we're also going to um, install and set up Landing Page Genius for you. We're going to install and set up CPV Labs for you. Um, and we're also going to set up all your Bing too. So Bing Ad Editor, Bing's Keyword 2, um, and Dreamweaver, okay? Um, so basically, it's going to be like you're pretty much just push button ready. Um, and all this stuff will be set up in your Bing account with all the tracking and testing already in place, all right? Um, and then we'll also give you guys a um, pre-campaign consultation. Um, you know, it needs to be scheduled in advance with, uh, with our assistant. Um, and then you'll also get one emergency consultation, um, you know, kind of, and I always say this to people, you know, because sometimes shit just hits the fan. So you might have a campaign that's doing well and all of a sudden shit hits the fan and you need to get on a call, like, you know, pretty much post haste and, uh, and, and figure out what's going on. So we're going to give you guys all that. And like I said, there's only five spots available for that. And um, we're going to do it for 1997. And, you know, the only reason I'm doing it that low is, um, and this is a one-time offer, it's just because you guys, you know, showed us love, um, you know, actually showed up on the webinars um, to get this training. So, you know, just to kind of give you guys a little leg up so you can get this stuff set up and you'll be ready to go um, is the only reason that we're doing this. Trust me when I say if you, like, try to hit me up later on in the week or some shit about this, I'm not, I mean, I'm not trying to be funny, but I'm not going to honor it just because, you know, this is just like a right now type of thing, and I don't, you know, I'm not going to, we're not going to have time to, like, sit around and, and mess around with this stuff, so I'm just really trying to help a few guys out who, um, you know, I guess don't have time or the, the knowledge to do it. So, so that's um, 1997. First five orders only, and you guys can email us. Um, you know, you guys got the email, 3M Sales LLC at gmail.com, and um, just you know, let me know which one you're interested in, and if you have any questions about it, um, and I'll get you guys a link to uh, actually pay that. And the only reason I didn't put a link here now is because this happens every time. We'll, I'll put a link in for somebody to order, <clears throat> and then three weeks later, somebody will order this shit, and then they'll be waiting around like, all right, I bought that uh, black hat setup. I'm ready. Where is it? And so I don't want this like trickling down later on down the road where people are trying to get it, take advantage of this then. It's not for then. It's, it's a now type of thing. You know, like you guys got 24 hours. Like you don't have to do it right this say. Uh, you know, I'll give you up to 24 hours or until the five, first five come in, you know, whichever happens first. And then um, for anybody that wants to, um, the super affiliate bank setup, and you can see obviously that, um, you know, the, the big the, the the money is in the big niches um you know so basically we'll give you everything that that I mentioned above but we'll um actually have you set up in all five niches all right and then you also get four one on one consulting calls two emergency calls and a fake page setup I mean that's one thing that we don't have in there because you know it's just a lot more time consuming um you know for us for us to do and at the price I you know we just couldn't put that in there, but um, with the super affiliate bank set up, um, we'll also set up a fake page, fake cloaking pages for each of those niches for you as well. All right, um, and you get an extra, uh, you get an extra lander for each niche as well. Um, and I'm only doing one of those. I don't want the um, bog up a bunch of time, so we'll do one of those. Um, the super affiliate um, bank set up, like I say, all five niches. Um, you know, the consultation calls, the emergency calls. Um, and uh, the fake page setups as well, and that was nine 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 seven. All right, so so I'm not spending much time on that. Like I say, it's um, just you know for guys that doesn't doesn't have the time, um, or don't really want to spend the time trying to set this stuff up. All right, so so that's it, man. Um, this is day the end of day three, guys. Um, we appreciate you, and like I say, um, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, oh. yeah, Ross, I'll I'll go back yeah. for you. Yeah. Um, now, I want to say something real quick too. Um. Uh, Kevin had a question about what kind of traffic budget. Um, we got a good relationship with uh, Extra Media, and they pay out very well. Um, they pay out. Uh, you you can get at least once weekly, yeah. even if you're not doing any volume. But if you're doing, and I am not even <laughs> feces is oscillator. I'm not even talking about like a shit ton of volume. If you can do, you know, a few hundred bucks a day, man, you can get paid daily. And let, let me just, let me just put me put you in the mind frame of this. Before we met these guys, and you know. Um, we would we would have to figure out okay all right now we need to set our ad budget because you know like with a lot of these different networks um which Greg and those guys were pretty good with paying us with their network but you know that's they don't focus on on like having a network they're you know they focus on like you know some of their own stuff so you know they would you know they would get us paid out weekly um you know but you know when you're spending you know 
five, eight, ten k in a day, um, you know, you have to kind of budget your stuff out the way to get paid. But with these guys, you can get paid um pretty much daily. Um, I do get back. Oh no, no, X Ray Bros. X Ray Media is an affiliate network, so they're actually the guys that you'll get the links to the offers from, and they actually pay you. Um, can you put the link in? Um, X Do you need X Ray Media's link? Is that the link you're talking about? Okay, you have an account with them, Ross. Good, yeah. Okay, so let me put that in for you. Um, I'll put it in right now. Extra media uh, four slash three m sales. Extra media dot com four slash three m sales. Uh, boom. There you go. I just sent that to you. Um, so yeah, so you don't have to worry about like. It getting you banned with them, like they know <laughs> they uh, the the owner of the the owners of that Chris and Brian, like they um they all about cloaking and doing that kind of shit. So like they're not gonna get pissed at you because you're cloaking. It won't affect them at all. Like they don't care. The only thing they could get banned would be your uh thing account. So you don't have to worry about it. So you know you're good to go. Um, so so anyway, guys. Um, any any other questions though before I um before I end this and start drinking some more beer. Um, is anything anybody's unclear on and keep in mind the replays will be sent out in an email um, along with the schedule that I just put up here for the adult dating workshops and then also um, I got everybody's email who got um, the bonus so you guys will, will be getting an update on that and so so we'll be good to go um, but like I say guys make sure you get an autoresponder um, account uh, get response or you know a Weber or whatever the case may be. I like A I like um get response the best though. They're just more affiliate friendly. So, you know, I would <clears throat> I would recommend going with them, definitely. Um yeah, A Weber kinda sucks, Bobby. So yeah. Um Oh uh, yeah, exactly. Um yeah, exactly, um Brian. It's um it's kind of like a, a done for you, um, except it's more it, it's more involved. The adult dating funnel isn't it, it, uh, done for you. Um, isn't isn't as involved. You'll get you know everything sent over to you. Um, you know everything like that. But uh, with the uh, bang, it's actually you know gone in and, and, and set up for you and everything like that. So um, and it's you know like I say within the niches. Um, Auto insurance, I think I skipped that page. So, um, yeah, auto insurance, muscle enhancer, testosterone booster, skin and diet. And if you're not sure which one, you know, it doesn't really matter. All of them are really big niches. You know, there's there's money to be had in, in every single one of those. Um, uh, you know, yeah, I can't really say one over the other. They're all real hot right now. Um, they're all pretty, pretty, pretty fat niches um, with, with lots of mass traffic going to them. So, um, so. So there you have it, guys. Um, end of day three, bang, uh, black cat training. Like I said, we'll reconvene um, on Tuesday, and obviously I'll get you guys links out and everything like that. No problem, Ross. No problem, my friend. Um, so anyway, guys, you guys have a great rest of your weekend, wherever you are. All right, and uh, I'll get that stuff out to you guys. And if you um, want to uh, need to get any stuff set up for you as far as the niches and stuff, like I say, email us at 3M Sales. LLC at gmail.com if you have any questions or anything like that. All right. All right.